Hey, hey, everybody. I am uh, going to be working on some canvas. A couple people said they wanted to watch. We'll see if anybody jumps on or not. Um, but let me uh, turn that fan off. It'll make it a little bit less noisy. on my phone so the audio is going to be so-so and I won't be able to see comments very well but you know what I'm going to do I'm going to bring it up over here so I can see comments so give me just a minute Oops. and I will see or I'll try to see See if I can get this uh, to come up. Ah, Jose. Hey, man. I see the chat now. I can kind of see it. I just got to look over here once in a while. Alright, so I'm not totally prepared for this. I just figured what the heck I'd throw it up and see uh, see about doing a live. I just noticed the audio is on. Let me turn that off. Alright, so these are four foot by four foot stretch canvas what we're doing. So obviously they're a little oversized to that. Looks like I need to uh, snap my blade. Been doing a lot of aluminum signs. Probably dulled the blade a bit. Oh. I'm at the bottom of that blade, so let me grab another one. Let me see, here we go. Fresh blade. So what do you have going on, man? It's been a minute since I've seen you. That I can't really see comments up here. Hopefully the audio is okay. All right, there we go. Now we can see what we've got. and mark these corners. I'm just going to do that with the Sharpie. Alright. So 
kind of flip the print over. We've got our little corner marks with the Sharpie. Grab one of the frames that I built. Big frame. Uh, you know, I just realized. Well, that's okay. So these marks are two inches off. Because I set it for stretching. Technically, it's a little more than two inches. Yeah, it's like two and a half. Hopefully, I gave myself enough extra. I gave myself tons that way. Oh, there we go. I need to come this way quite a bit. There we go. That's better. Let me check my messages. Hey, Mr. Postman, how you doing, man? Sorry, I'm, I can't see. I'm using my phone for streaming right now, and I can't see it, so I'm using the computer over here. My wife is an artist in high school, art teacher, so I usually get her help. There you go, yeah. And these, you know, these get a little trickier when they're big like this. I mean, this is a four foot by four foot, and we've done a lot of four by sixes as well. Um, so a little bit trickier to get even stretch because you don't want those wrinkles or anything. I do have a stretcher. I don't use it very often. Um, but I have it just in case. I kind of play it by ear as I'm going. But it's just a, a six inch stretcher. You can kind of get a sense of it. So it helps when needed. Now you are going to hear the compressor. I get a little loud. Five crown staples. I do use a smaller compressor rather than my big one. Why? I don't know. I just really kind of use it this way. I can really regulate the pressure down without a separate regulator over here. I don't have to worry about running an airline across my walking path. Well, I guess I could just do a drop. I had a drop over here, so I could have actually done that. Check my stretch on the other side real quick. See kind of where I'm at. I've got plenty. Yeah, I've got plenty all the way around, so we're good. So the challenge with these big ones are normally, I mean, I work my way, especially when you're starting, you know, you start in the center, pull tension across, flip it around, and you kind of start working out, and then you start working opposite sides. Problem is, this thing's, you know, over four feet, so... <laughs> It makes that process a little more hairy, um, especially when you're trying not to damage the front print. So it does slow down a little bit, the process. <clears throat> the 
Yeah, I mean, ideally, I'd run this airline over there, which, you know what? I can actually do that. Hang on, I'm going to do that so I don't have to roll this canvas around. Just add another flex line to this one. That way I can come over there without having to throw this thing. But yeah, let me move the camera back a little bit. Let me double check air pressure. Gotta love when you're starting it. Yeah, we're good. back to the other side and we just keep working our way around. Like I said, these big ones are just a little bit more challenging. Take a bit more time. So that's not ideal. So I said, these big ones are a pain in the butt. <clears throat> so I may have to pull those staples out and redo those. clean stretch on that side, but I think, ow, I think because I started on this side, I got a little bit of wrinkle. So, let me grab my flat head. Good. Let's try a clean stretch. Much better. Good. Sorry, I'm not too exciting. This is the slow part. Once we get moving, it works better. Hey, Lily, how you doing? 
Did you end up get, you guys end up getting any rain down there? I mean, I know Dallas got a crazy amount of it, although we didn't get much right where we are, which is interesting, but I just didn't hear much about down in San Antonio whether you guys got hit or not. Houston got hit pretty good, but that doesn't mean San Antonio got hit, so. Yeah, well, like I said, we needed it like crazy, but I'm I'm in North Dallas, and I mean, we barely got, I think we got like 1.4 inches, so it was enough to help, but it wasn't anything like, like Dallas got. You know, I've never been to Abilene, but I'm, I, can, I can see how that could happen out there. Just depending on, because there's not a ton of runoff or water out there, I don't, I don't believe, not that I remember anyhow. Anyway. What's up, Eddie? How you, how you doing, man? Sorry, I'm like kind of far right now, but I'm trying to get the whole 4x4 canvas in the shot. <laughs> I will say the humidity has definitely been up. I cranked the AC down out here to kind of get the humidity out because it was like 70, 72 percent humidity when I got out here this morning. Now I've got it down to like 66. So get the temperature at 71. So better. Actually, when I was 
was finishing that that truck wrap and the Jeep wrap, it was the same thing. It was kind of humid, humid in the shop. I even had it down to like 73, but with the humidity, man, I ended up dropping it to 71 just to make it a little bit more manageable. It was already kind of cool out or cooler out. What have you been up to, Eddie? I said I'm trying to knock out this small stuff because I've got another another truck wrap to do. So knock out those four 24 by 36 quart ply signs. I got these two stretch canvases to do. The graphic for Friday's dance floor wrap that we got. Um, and then some other small projects, some other, I got another 30 Coro signs that we're doing for one of the realtor groups. <clears throat> so try to get that stuff done and out of the way so I can set aside the time to get that truck done. bouncing over here to check chat. I'm going to see you guys just sitting there. You're not talking. Come on. Give me something. Talk. What do you guys got going on today or this week? Anything fun? Oh, I also have another customer that's an auto dealer that he's moving locations this weekend. I have a feeling I'm going to have some kind of rush projects for him. We have all their business cards too, so I'm sure that's going to be rolling in. He's uh, he's kind of taking advantage of the uh, the real estate market. He owned the lot that he was in, had it for forever. Uh, but, you know, it's right on a freeway in a big city, and I think he uh, got a heck of a deal. Ended up selling it. So he's moved into a, uh, another older dealership. Well, I say older, not really older. Um, it's actually a larger dealership property in a similar big city, San Plano, uh, if you're familiar with Dallas but it's kind of off the beaten path a little bit. But his business isn't really much walk-ins, so he's more, he's got his standard customers and he does a lot of online marketing and stuff, so.
Come on, guys, chat. Say something. I mean, I know this is kind of boring with me sitting here, but if we were talking, it'd be a little better. <laughs> a little different than the vlog style or the informational style. I just figured I hadn't done a live in a while. Leonardo Berlin had said, you know, hey, I should go on live, and I don't even see him on here, so I don't know what he's doing. Anyhow, of all the canvases, these are the ones I like to do. You know, the big ones, custom, bigger business customers. quote-unquote one-way perf. What do you consider it to be one-way? I mean, perf's perf to me. <laughs> and it's not technically, well, I guess, I guess it's semi-one-way. Semi it's kind of like tint. Whatever side's dark is the side you're going to see from. And the side that light that is light is going to be where you see into. We've had problems getting the high end perf. You know, the cast, the, you know, the higher end perfs are really hard to get right now. Problem is, most of my commercial perf customers, you know, they want material that's going to last them five plus years, four plus years. And, uh, you know, here in Texas, especially if they're in direct sun, good luck on that. Oh, gotcha, okay. Yeah, I've never heard that before. Let's see, which way are we going? Okay, so that's up. So I want to wrap the sides in. Side, or top end, bottom end, and then top over. <clears throat> Got my normal patterns.
that's what I missed. Oh, got it. No problem. All right, I'm getting boring. I'm trying to pay attention so I don't screw this thing up. This is a big one to mess up. Got it. Yeah, so that makes sense. I guess it's a marketing term that they use. Oh yeah, well, I guess most of my existing customers know, but yeah, I guess I could see that. There's certainly been some projects where we'll like, you know, well, they want to be able to kind of see through it, okay, and then we'll explain, well, that's, that's perf. So yeah, that makes sense. What's up, Dom? Curious how I do corners. Well, you know, I, I've done them differently over the years, um, but I'm pretty consistent for the last probably five of doing it the way I do it now. Um, some people do overlapping flaps to hide anything, which I just don't like the extra thickness, so I try and minimize my overlaps. Um, actually, here, let me move the camera over here, and you can kind of see I'm kind of working on a corner right now. So yeah, let me let me see. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Well, here I'll zoom in on this one maybe. Can you see that one? So like on that one, what I try and do is top and bottom is I'll I'll, I'll, my, the first thing I'll do is fold, you know, work my way across tight, and then I take a blade in the corner and slice an angle cut at the corner, cut away any excess. That way I can do and my, finish my stretch on the side. Then on this one, I'll usually just do a light fold over, and where this is, you can just kind of do a small fold because it's just going to go on the back. I mean, you're never going to see this like that. Pull it nice and tight. Here, let me finish. I'll, we'll, we'll, do, we'll just do it. So I'll do that. You know, and you want to make sure there's tension here too. And 
hit that like that and then cut away the excess basically now I'm gonna finish the other side but when it comes to this side what I basically do is I'll stand it up I'll cut from there up at a little bit of an angle and then I'll do that same fold over trick I did here I'll do that same fold over here so I'll fold this little piece over get it as level as I can with that bottom line and then stretch it across and then staple it down like I said I'll I'll try and get that in the shot here let me come back to this corner see if you can see what I'm working on here since I just kind of started this corner so yeah so I work my way across till it's pretty tense right so it's not going to go anywhere and then I'll kind of lift it up I'll come in here and start at the corner and I'll just cut straight up at the corner and then where this extra flap is I just kind of cut away a little to the corner right then I'll finish stretching the side then I'll take this do that little bit of a fold over here Tight. Like I said, you want to make sure it's tight here too, not just in the corner. Okay. So now that corner's I said the back doesn't look pretty, that's fine. And then I'll show you when I actually I can go ahead and do these sides actually in a second. So let me trim this extra off. That I've got on the back side here. So that's trimmed away. So now, what I'll typically do is before I get before I get too tight on this edge, because if I come all the way to here, I don't have any room right to keep this loose. So I kind of come I come far enough down with my stretch that I still have enough to flatten this out. And then typically I'll stand it up, put pressure on it. I'll take my blade at the corner and I'll come down at a little bit of an angle like that. So hopefully you can see that. Then I'll lay it back down. Again, this isn't tight yet. So then I'll flap this over. It's easier to do off the table a little bit. And then there you go. So now you've got a pretty, a pretty tight edge. Now I won't staple that down yet. I'll make sure and work this first. Because I don't want to create a, I don't want to create a crease. There we go. So now, finish that fold over, pull it nice and tight, and there we go. Now it's just a matter of trimming away this excess. Oops. And then we got a, a pretty tight edge and I only have this at the top and bottom so it's not even like you really even see it that's why I like I like to tuck the sides because the sides are typically what you see hope that makes sense so let me zoom back out here we go if you have a question let me know I can see the chat right now so let me move the camera back around the other side all right so yeah so like I said hopefully that made sense so I'll do the same thing right here Like I 
said, I've got enough loose here that I can fold that over. And there's not much to fold. I mean, it's like a sixteenth of an inch at the bottom. You know, it's just enough to hide the cutaway. There we go. And then we'll finish stretching over to the corner. Check that we're good, and we'll stretch that down. And there we go. And I'm just going to finish trimming away this extra overlap. I'll get back over to the computer in just a second and see if I'm missing anything. Because <laughs> I probably, I probably am. All right, so the top is done. Oh, actually, that was the side. <laughs> I just did one side. Same thing, though. Yeah, no problem. You probably showed us the beginning, but how do you go about centering your famous little frame? Um, so centering, it's, it can get tricky, right? So on this one, it's relatively easy because it's, it's a black back, black background. Let me change my camera. It's a black background print, right? So, you know, any darker, any darker background, you can kind of see through the canvas, right? From the back, you know, you can hold it up to the light and see this dark edge. Um, and then I'll just take a Sharpie and mark the corner. And then I usually do about a two and a quarter inch. I usually do five inch, like if I'm doing a four foot by four foot canvas, so it's 48 by 48, right? I'm actually printing it five inches bigger than that. So I've got basically two and a half inches, you know, cause this is, I'm using one by two material. So you got what, one and three quarter inches coming up. And then you want a little bit of coming around the back. So I just print a little bit of extra, right? So then I can just lay it, lay my faint, my frame face down on the canvas, on the back of the canvas, with the marks made on the back, um, and then I just measure in. I go two and a half inches in from the corners, should be where my dots are, and it doesn't need to be perfect. I gave myself an extra, you know, enough extra bleed that it's not bad. The only time it it, it presents more of a challenge is two time, two ways. Number one is if you're if you've got a light canvas print with a lot of detail um, and the details wrapping around the sides, especially if you've done a mirrored corner or a mirrored side. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the different ways you can do canvases, right? So you can do a 48 by 48 and you can make it 55 by 55, you know, for my extra sides and bleed, and then just do a black or a white edge, or you can extend the print to the pack, you know, inside, or you can do a mirrored edge where you're mirroring that two inches of print flipping it out here and it's a mirror. Well, in, in any of those cases, especially if like, like this being a black print and you got a white edge, it's gonna be really sensitive to being accurate. But in that case, again, I can see those marks pretty well. Um, so I can kind of mark where my frame needs to lay. It's, it's not that bad, it just takes some practice. You know. That's usually the biggest time it's a problem is when you're doing a white edge or a, yeah, white, white and black edges are the hardest, I would say. If you're doing a colored edge and you need the print to hit the edge exactly, that's where it's a little more challenging. But again, usually I can hold the canvas up, I can see where the, where the color change is, just take a Sharpie and make a period, make a dot at those four corners, and then you can kind of line up your wood, your frame on those corners. Hopefully that, that makes sense. You bounce back over to the chat. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a challenge. I mean, if you get major OCD. <laughs> um, 
that's why you know if, if you can if you can help it like for me for example for most customers I'll 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 look at their art and then I'll make a recommendation on a side um, so like this particular example which you've kind of seen the front of already but it's a mostly dark shot it's like a night shot with a flower in the middle right and you get the background of the moon so it's a dark shot so with this one I basically since it's there's almost no detail in those edges because it's already pretty black I just did a mirror so I just flipped the, the last two inch edge and created my overlap or you know my sides um, that was just a natural spot but the problem with this one is and I don't know if you can see it from that shot but you know the image comes really close to the sides so if we had done this with a wrap a true wrap without compensating for that you would have lost parts of the flower it would have been on the side so on this one that's why I suggested we size it to 48 by 48 and then I do a mirrored side so we get the detail now the other one that you'll see that I'm gonna work on when I'm done with this one we didn't end up having to do that we basically just resize the print to the 55 by 50 or whatever it is 53 by 53 instead of the 48 by 48 and we're just gonna wrap the sides because there's not much detail close to those edges hopefully that'll make sense Yeah, no, um, Mr. Postman. Yes, no, um, we don't, most of the, most of our canvas is custom sized and what's normally oversized. I'll, I'll normally tell customers if they say, oh, I want an 18 by 24 canvas. I'm like, just go to Walmart or, you know, whatever. I mean, it's not worth our time. Um, and so I'm honest with them about that. Now, when it comes to anything custom or panel prints or, you know, big ones like this that a lot of places won't do in custom sizes, that's our, that's our bread and butter. So, as far as canvas goes um but so we build all our own frames um it's it's and that's why a lot of the online places only have specific sizes right because they've got to stock all these stretcher frames um it does make putting the stretcher frames together easier but you know if you look at the price of those versus you know i buy good hardwood one by twos um eight foot sticks in this case i needed I did four, let's see, I did six eight foot, no, I did five. One, two, three, four, five. I did five eight foot sticks for this, for both this canvas and the other one, four foot by four foot canvases. Um, and it was like, they were like seven something a piece. So what do I have in that, 40 something bucks? Um, for four foot, which would have been four foot stretcher, six four foot stretcher bars plus corner braces. Um, and that's basically what I did was I just took two of the four by eights, or I'm sorry, two of the one by two by eights and cut them down to the beveled four foots. Um, and then I took the last, the extra, the fifth one, and I did two foot corner stringers for both units. So I got four of them out of one eight foot stick. So doesn't take much time to cut them down. Um, I then glue them up and brad nail them together. I usually let them sit overnight. Um, then I'll come back and we'll just do an edge sand, make sure that they've got a slight bevel um, and they're ready to go. So, um, and that's another reason that, again, if somebody does want smaller orders, like let's say they want an 18 by 24, or they might want a mix of stuff, if they're doing a bulk, like, you know, it doesn't have to be bulk in the sense of 30 of them. I mean, if they're just doing three, four, five, then I don't mind giving them an extended discount for the five because, you know, for us to go off subject and get the wood, build the frame, you know, blah, 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 for one, doesn't make any sense. That's where stretcher bars make sense, right? Um, but if we're doing a bunch of them or we're doing custom sizes, I don't have a problem doing that at all. It doesn't really take that much time. I mean, I can, I cut the boards down uh, yesterday in probably 10 minutes, maybe 12. Um, I glued the frames up in about another 10 minutes and set them aside. And this morning when I was ready to mess with them, I busted out the sander, the orbital. We went over them in about the same thing, about 10 minutes, had them ready to go, and now we're stretching, so. All right, so back to stretching. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you're doing a ton of standard size canvases, then by all means, you know, buy buy some stretcher frames, you know. 
or do like um, a couple of the other guys do, and you can buy, I forget the name of the company now that's got them, but there's the frames that you can buy. They're, they're really pricey in my opinion for what they are, but you've got like no labor. <laughs> um, they basically, they're, they're custom stretcher frames that actually have adhesive on them, like on the edge, and these little corner brackets, these corner plastic pieces, and you basically, let's say you're doing a 18 by 18 canvas, you basically just put your corner pieces down, you use your 18 inch stretchers, sorry, wait for that to shut off. So you just stick the little plastic corner pieces down, you, you grab your 18 inch stretchers, and they basically flat click into those corner pieces, and then they've got some adhesive on it, and then you basically um, flip it over, put it on your canvas, you grab the canvas side, it sticks to the adhesive, and you fold the pieces up, and they're basically double sided to your, to your canvas, and then there's just a little, almost like a a horseshoe shaped piece that goes in the corner and locks the corners in and you're done. So yeah, makes life super easy. Um, you can throw canvases together in a matter of a minute, um, minute, minute and a half. Um, but you know, they only have custom sizes, blah, blah, blah. Their systems, in my opinion, expensive to buy the frames to do it is quite expensive in my opinion. Um, so you just got to balance what your labor costs are versus what your material costs are. But you know, if you've got to order those every time because you don't want to stock sizes, you got to wait on that. Is the customer willing to wait? I, I, everybody's got their niche. This is ours. <laughs> like I said, I'm not going to discount them because they've got their place. It's a good niche product. Just not for uh, not for us. Number one done. So you can kind of see my upside down, no sideways. So there's the back. And there's the front. Hopefully you can see that most of that. <laughs> a little bit of wrinkle over here, which isn't ideal, but it's super subtle. The biggest thing with this is just protecting the print.
Okay, so now I gotta figure out where I'm gonna set this uh, so it's safe. So I don't wanna set that edge down on the ground, so I'll grab uh, some cardboard. I don't have any pieces that are big enough to cover it. That's like four by three. <laughs> All right, let's do this. We've got these foam mats that we work on. So I'll just lay that down and set it, set it on the edge. Alright, now which side do I need here? Yeah, that's my kind of good side. Alright, so let's grab that canvas. This one's gonna be a little different because it's not it's not as dark, it's a much lighter. But I'll still be able to see the corners. Grab that sharpie. So I just kind of hold it up in the light and just kind of put a dot on the corner. That kind of gives me my reference. Um, Eddie, um, when I have, when I have like standard size frames that I build, like more smaller than four by four, <laughs> then I do typically clamp after I glue and, and brad nail. Um, on the four by fours, my clamps don't quite go to four foot, like outside. So on these, I, I don't strap them. No, I mean, the glue will do its job and the brad nails will keep it together and then once you stretch the frame you know once you stretch the canvas over it you're holding it all together anyhow it's not going to go anywhere all right so we've got this side goes down so yeah so same thing i'll just kind of get two inches from the corner a little over two inches and actually you can see I don't know if you can see that you probably can't here let me zoom down there you go you can see how much wraps over that edge and that's not even pulled tight yet so you know we've got we've got plenty to come over and actually that needs to go down I can tell you right now because I did more of it over that yeah about like that Let me zoom back out. All right. So yeah, then I can check this side. We've got plenty. More than enough. Bottom. Yep, more than enough. So yeah, we're good. We're fine. Now we 
start the process over again. Start in the center on the top or the bottom. And I'll go to the other side. Set the opposing stretch. a little bit of time in this one when you get these big ones. But the money is decent either way. You know, and I've got a happy customer that we do other work for, etc. So especially when they can't get these from their normal a lot of the normal suppliers that they try and get from. Customers are trying to get them. In this case, it's a it's an artist collective. So, yeah, this the starting part goes a little slow. Once you get them rolling, it's not bad. Yeah, no problem. Hopefully that made sense and helped a little bit. It's not too bad to just move your way around and get an even stretch. Like I said, if you're not the greatest at doing your stretching or you need a tighter stretch, you know, get you one of these little stretcher clamps. You know, you can kind of grab on like that and stretch it down. You could actually use this as a leverage bar too. been a couple of really big ones that we've done that that really does help.
Come on, what else are you guys up to? You haven't said what you guys are working on. You can see what I'm doing. Any fun projects or just the same old same? Knocking the dang sleeper down. I thought I could catch it, but one thing about rotating this big old canvas around. <laughs> Close to those corners. Who wants to come over and help? Come practice the corner. So now let's see, I got one more one more corner of slice. Alright, now I need to check which is top and which is bottom. So this is the top right here. So again, what I'm gonna do is fold down the top and bottom edges. So it's less likely to see that seam. So I can kind of work this edge right now. Out of staples again. Yeah, these four by fours, you definitely use your fair amount of staples. shot but these are the wide crown 
definitely what you want to use. Otherwise, that thing's this canvas is just going to tear right through. Man, no chatting. Come on, you guys. You're getting boring on me. All right, so now I'll go ahead and finish these edges. So this one, we'll fold that over. Like I said, you're not really going to see it from this far away, but I showed you earlier. <laughs> A lot of times I gotta to make it easier I just get it off the table. Tuck this corner in. Tuck this corner in. Tell you what, I'll move the camera a little closer. I mean, it is just a mobile phone, but there you go. Hopefully, you can see a little bit better what I'm doing over there. Yeah, so again, I'm tucking the, the bottom and the top in to the sides. Once I've got it stapled about two, three inches away, I've got enough that I can hit the corner. Turn that side down to the corner. 
same here. Put the corner. Cut that little piece away from the corner. And we'll finish our stretch. get any of that roughness out of the way, pull nice and tight in, set that edge, cut away this excess here, This excess. <clears throat> okay, let me finish this side down here. Same thing. Fold that corner over just to hide any of that little bit of fray. that tight. that corner at a bit of an angle. Come out here and fold that edge over. There we go. Now finish stretching over here. Finish our stretch. Pull that nice and tight. So, let me uh, back the camera up again. Alright, so let's see what we got. So, that's... There we go, there it is. <laughs> Looking good. Looks like we do have a little bit of dirt on one of the bars, so let me try and wash that off and hope for the best. I'm not 
wasn't using anything chemical, just water. Water and a microfiber cloth. Yep, took that right off, no problem. It was just a little dirt on the table. The transfer to the print. spots. You've got to be careful because you'll definitely pick up stuff from the table that you're working on. But it's just a little dirt. Not a big deal. over here. Alrighty, well, that is uh, pretty much it for this. We've got to go in and work on a few other things. So, but I figured, you know, this would be a good chance to do a quick live with everybody since it's been a minute since I've done one. So, anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed and I thank you for dropping in and the chat. And if you have any other questions or anything, obviously hit me up in the Discord. Um, and if you haven't joined us there, jump in the Discord. Just a good time to just chat randomly. You can kind of leave it up in a browser on the side or something or on your phone. Um, and just jump in when you got some time and talk industry stuff. So anyhow, hope you guys have a great one. And I will see you next time. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.